Welcome to Beyond the Press channel. Today we are going to install this big ass battery bank. Uh, I'm going to also explain why I bought this and what it's going to do and how much it costs. But uh, now we have two challenges according moving this thing. The first challenge is that it weighs three tons and the second challenge is that it's worth all, almost 100,000 euros. So that makes it an interesting piece for the forklift. And we are going to move it about like 10 meters to that direction. And then we have to put it here. I, I, I can show what, what we are going to install it on. It's going to be here. And we can't get it with the forklift. Uh, this is like too close to the, this if we try to lift it from there. So can't do with the forklift and we definitely can't spin it like this. So it's not going to go here with the forklift. So we have to get a crane to lift it here. But first we get it like quite close with the forklift and then with the crane the rest of the trip. And here is already some electrical stuff. It's installed on Friday. We have to still plug it on the other side of the wall to the main main electric thing of the workshop. I think this is going to be really like a professional video. I really know this electrical stuff. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> yeah, but uh, I know the forklift stuff. So let's start with that. As you know, I really like like warning stickers. This is one of my favorite stickers ever. 1,100 volts and 8,000 amperes. That means that uh, if you tap yourself with this, then there is only like socks left of you, nothing else. I think I'm going to remove this and put on the bunker. <laughs> it just like looks like adventure. Yeah, yeah. This is much better than yeah. this. You can only guess what this is. Yeah. It's definitely not good. And why I bought the battery and what the hell it's going to do? Well, it wasn't cheap, like around $100,000. So it's a lot of money. And I'm not going to use it myself at all. It's, it doesn't have anything to do with my electric usage. I don't have any solar panels to hook it up. And I'm not going to charge it when the electricity is cheap and then use it when it's like expensive. That's not nearly profitable enough to like justify the price. Uh, I'm going to rent it out basically. I'm going to provide a service where I balance the Finnish electrical grid with my battery and then I got paid to do it. This is going to be like super simplified, but there is the frequency of the like AC electricity on the network. It should be 50 Hertz at all times. And if it's even slightly something different, that's bad. And you have to fix it somehow. And on the older days, it was easier. If it's too low, you make the electric machine run faster at the electric power plant. But nowadays, when you have solar and wind, you cannot adjust like how hard the sun shines or how much it, <laughs> the wind blows. So you have to provide like little bit help to keep the frequency where it should be. And Big ass batteries are a great way to do it. And because in Finland and everywhere else, they're installing a lot more solar and wind at the moment, you need a lot more of the batteries. And because you need a lot more of them, there isn't like enough of them. The profits are pretty good. At the moment, it's going to pay itself off around four years. If everything stays like it's now, probably doesn't, but there is a lot of merch into like get lower the profits than they are now. Uh, I'm expecting that it's going to like beat the stock market. Probably. I'm pretty sure about that. And $100,000 is, it was a bit too much maybe. <laughs> maybe for me, it's quite a large portion of my, like the whole assets that I have. But uh, the scale, scale works here. If you buy a smaller battery, it's not as like, good investment because you pay more per kilowatt hour of batteries. So the bigger, the better. And that's how we ended up here. 
and the maximum output of the battery that it can provide power to adjust the frequency is 105 kilowatts. So that's a lot. So we need 200 ampere fuses. Uh, luckily our electric, what is this, like center at the workshop had capacity just for 200. So we just need to make a new connection for the battery there. And this needs to be like really well done because 105 kilowatts is a lot of power and this should do it work. It's work here like 25 years. So it needs to be like all perfect. Otherwise it's going to like catch on fire or something at some point. But now it's now it's done all, all like really, really well and high, high, high quality. And there is second electrical center outdoors next to the battery with like big switch. So if you wanna switch the battery off for get like uh, voltage on the power grid down for maintenance or something like that, it's easy to do. And the battery is coming from my uh, friend's company. He's the crazy guy who makes the ice carousels. So we made a lot of content in Finnish about the project. That's why I'm doing just voiceovers here. But uh, we couldn't get it on the right place, the battery with the forklift, because it needs to be quite precisely put there, because we have to put the power cables through the like power port on the bottom of the battery and stuff like that. So I just used my forklift to get it like pretty close. And then we used this giant truck with the crane to like get it the last two meters and put it on exactly the perfect spot and these are quite common in Finland like uh, trucks with this sized cranes and I think they are called quite often Hiappi it's uh, from uh, one of the most popular like brands of this type of crane so even if it's not that brand it's still called called the same and it was quite easy to put there but the like instructions on the battery were crazy about the lifting. It says like that the crane and the straps and everything needs to be four times as strong as it should be in case there's earthquake during the installation. But uh, we didn't get earthquake this time, so everything went smoothly. But hey, global instructions, so got to put all, all there. So it's not your fault if somebody lifts it during the earthquake with too small grain and the battery, battery goes down and gets broken or something. And I have been quite busy. I got a, a new robot during the same day. It's also from APB. It's a bit more modern and easier to use. I'm going to make a content with that quite soon, but a lot of new toys. Okay, we are waiting for the last improvement from the Swedish headquarters, they are using the laptop and remote control to configure something there, computer things. But while we are waiting that, we can go through how this whole thing works. So the uh, four black boxes on the top, they are basically like small batteries from electric car, like small car batteries, like 50 kilowatt hours, but a bit different chemistry. You can charge these completely full and drain them completely empty and they're okay with that. Yeah, this has 215 kilowatt hours and uh, it, it really has that capacity. So you can uh, discharge and charge it from zero to 100%. And then the lowest box there, that's the AC-DC converter. And then there's some computer stuff that controls everything. And this is like brand new model and it has a couple nice features. I think the nicest feature is 10 year guarantee. Yes, and it's even extendable to 15 years. It's the longest warranty there is, is for this kind of cabinets. And then because on some markets there can go like 100 megawatt hours of electricity through this in one year. So how efficient this is really matters and this is is really efficient. This is like one of the best in the market. Yes, the total efficiency uh, according to Huawei is over 91 percent 
and uh, the, the total efficiency or the profitability about this BES also comes from the fact that the SOH value, meaning that the, the quality uh, of, of cells and the total capacity of a total available capacity dur during long term, it's higher than, than uh, other systems. So it doesn't wear out so fast. Yes, yes. And then the second thing that makes this so good with the energy <laughs> is that this is hybrid cooled. There's big fans and uh, it just uses fans when it's like not doing much which is hopefully very rarely i hope it's running like full steam all the time but if it does it okay in the winter it's really cool cold so it might be good with just air and then if it gets really hot then there is like a heat pump on the door and it cools the battery packs through the liquid cooling there and that's about it it's it's a very simple and very complicated. So basically it uses its own energy less to heat it and uh, uh, cool it. So the total efficiency is better. And then the most impressive thing, because I don't understand like much of this. It's hard to say like how good is all this. But if this is as good as this, then it's great. But this door mechanism. Look at this. That's the most over-engineered door that I have ever seen. But there is a reason for this, because in like extremely rare case, that something goes wrong with the, one of the batteries and it generates gases that can get on fire and explode. The door doesn't fly away. The f uh, roof pops just slightly open and the gases went out of there. But it has really good like fire management systems. If one of the batteries goes, the rest of the system should be okay. So it has plenty of safety features, all kind of nice features to make it the safest best in the market. And this battery model is brand new. So we have to get it approved, the battery and the installation and everything by Fingrid. It's the company that like takes care of the electrical grid here in Finland and they're doing some tests they like ask the battery to do something and then they see will did the battery do what they asked and after those are done then we can like get it on the product production use and I start to earn some money with that I can do update like after one year or something something also here how the battery is doing how much it's making money for my company but uh, I'm not going to turn this into <laughs> investing channel. I just thought that it's it's like technically also interesting, interesting like project and I haven't seen anybody else doing YouTube videos about them. Uh, we are doing a lot of content about this in Finland. Uh, I, I accidentally became like investing influencer in Finland. I have been doing investing as an like hobby and part of my job like 10 years and I like to make content out of, out of it and it's quite easy, easy subject for me to make a content. There is, there is like quite low bar on Finland in terms of like investing content. So it's like pretty easy market for me to do good content and the like battery and marketing of it's like nice fit for that. So if you want to learn more about the battery, go check out my Finnish channels. I, I put the link to investing channel here. I think you can get it translated by YouTube own like auto translation or something like that. Me and Janne, we are going to do like podcast episode, talk about two hours of like how to make money with the batteries. So <laughs> I'm not sure how well that translates to other markets outside of the Finland, but could be interesting if you are interested on that side of things. And in general, I have been doing a lot of work for my Finnish channels. They are growing nicely. And we started like workshop channel in Finnish. And after the summer also our editor comes back from the military service. So then we have situation where we have more people doing work and more ways to monetize the content, this type of content. So I think we can again start to do more Beyond the Press videos after the summer. 
I have a couple really good ideas that I'm really excited about. So subscribe the channel to see those. And that is all for today. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.